I'm, I'm, I'm just so much humbled <laughs> with this life that I'm here with you with um, such a great mind. So, Dr. Omar, this is your expertise for my co-vigilance. And a lot of, a lot of pharmacists, um, you know, health professionals, we hear about pharmacovigilance. Not a lot of us have been exposed to the science of pharmacovigilance, especially the ones who have, who have never worked in clinical research. So what is pharmacovigilance? Hello everyone and welcome to this live meeting. Thank you so much for attending this live meeting. Uh, we love you. We love you, our students, our attendees. Thank you so much for attending this live meeting. Today, we are going to talk about pharmacovigilance and drug safety. Um, if you know me, if you don't know me, I'm Shams Kayand. Um, the uh, co-founder of RX course, which is an online platform of continuing education in pharmacy. A few days ago, I got introduced to one of the magnificent minds in pharmacovigilance and drug safety, Dr. Omar Reimer. He's with me today. And you, doctor, <laughs> mashallah, mashallah, you really inspired me. A wonderful mind, huge amount of knowledge and certificates and degrees that I'm really, really, like I unveiled that and I would love to share it to the world and to let the world know who is Dr. Omar Emmer. So if you don't mind, please introduce yourself to the world. Thank you, thank you, Shams. Uh, uh, welcome to all the attendees and uh, students and pharmacists and all the attendees, uh, me medical doctors and life science students. So uh, I'm still learning. Um, we never uh, uh, stop learning. We learn it every day. And you know, the drug and pharmacy is my passion. And I keep learning. Um, uh, first of all, happy World uh, Pharmacist Day yes. for all the pharmacists. And uh, so, uh, as you present me, uh, Omar Aimer, I'm a PharmD. Uh, this is a quite uh, this year is quite special for to me. I uh, this is the twentieth year of my career. Uh, I'm pharmacovigilance and drug safety and device safety officer. I'm, uh, uh, I'm working as pharmacovigilance specialist and officer mm -hmm. since more than three years here in Canada, Montreal. Wow, mashallah, mashallah, that's amazing. So Dr. Omar, tell us about your education. So as I, as I said before, I'm a PharmD graduated in 2000 from the University of Oran, uh, a beautiful city uh, in the west of Algeria, North Africa, since 2000. Then I moved to Algiers. Uh, I'm, I'm a little globetrotter. As I moved to Algiers in 2000 and graduated uh, at, as PhD of a PhD in pharmacology uh, in, at the University of Algiers, the capital of, uh, of Algeria, in 2004, then I, I moved, I jumped to Paris in France, uh, and I had an education of pharma, of uh, uh, a master science, sorry, in industri industrial pharmacy uh, at the University Paris Descartes, Paris Descartes in France in 2009, then pharmacovigilance and drug safety master science at the same university, Paris Descartes, in 2015. Awesome. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of knowledge. MashaAllah. So what about your career, Dr. Amar? What did you do all these years? So 28 years, 28 years of experience. So, uh, yes, uh, I was also when, when, when uh, I was in, in Algeria before, 
I, um, uh, I was as a lecturer on pharmacology at the University of Oran, my university, first university. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, I was a lecturer on pharmacology at the, uh, 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 the ph pharmacy department for four years. And uh, I was as director of quality control of drugs uh, this is um, uh, uh, the authority, uh, the Algerian at uh, the Algerian authority, regulation authority. Then, when I moved to France, I also worked as pharmacovigilance uh, and drug safety pharmacist at uh, the uh, um, Hospital Européen Georges Pompidou. It's uh, the European hospital uh, in in Paris. Okay. Uh, in Paris, yes, uh, as uh, for three years. Then I, I moved at Raymond Poincaré uh, Hospital in the same uh, in the same institution. This is the uh, the greater hospital, university hospitals of Paris. Wow. Until 2017. Until 2017. And right now, Dr. Omar, you are in Montreal in Canada. So since the moment that you landed in Canada, what are you doing? So as I said, I'm globetrotter and I still learning. Yeah. And I jumped as I make the first jump from North Africa to Europe. I, uh, 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 so I jumped also in North America for one purpose is to have an international career. And as the regulation is not the same in Europe and North Africa, uh, yeah. North, in Europe, North Africa and North America is not, it's quite different. And to have the international expertise, as I said, three continents, three languages, as my mother, mother tongue is Arabic and French and English in, in North America now. Yeah. So I learned and I I still learning here, and I'm 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 working as as a pharmacovigilance specialist specialist in a big pharma, it's a global mm -hmm. company, uh, and um, I uh, I I, uh, I attended also, and I participate in World Drug Safety Congresses here in Canada, in Europe, and in North um, in in America. Sorry, yeah. uh, as a speaker, as the chair of front tables as a, a share person for sessions, especially in uh, uh, the impact of artificial intelligence, AI. And I, I prefer use the automation, okay. the impact of automation on pharmacovigilance. I used to, I used to, uh, to, uh, to use the term PV, PV is pharmacovigilance. Okay. <laughs> Get used to it, <laughs> okay? PV, whenever we're going to say PV, it's for microvigilance. I'm, I'm, I'm just so much humbled <laughs> with this life that I'm here with you with um, such a great mind. So, Dr. Omar, this is your expertise for microvigilance. And a lot of, a lot of pharmacists, um, you know, health professionals, we hear about pharmacovigilance. Not a lot of us have been exposed to the science of pharmacovigilance, especially the ones who have, who have never worked in clinical research. So what is pharmacovigilance? So the pharmacovigilance, it's a, a component, a compound of two terms. Pharmacon in Greek is a m m drug or medicine and vigilance is to raise awareness. Okay, as as we know that everything in when you we use everything, we had a risk. We had an efficiency, and we have a risk. And in pharmacovigilance and drug safety, we work and we try to understand and to identify all risks re related to the drugs, medical devices. Yes. vaccines, biological, mm -hmm. all the health products, okay, to understand, to identify those risks, the risks, sorry, and to avoid those risks. The, the final purpose of pharmacovigilance is yes. to improve 
the global health, to improve oh. the health and the quality of health for our patients. And at the final step, pharmacovigilance is used and drug safety is used to improve the patient safety. Awesome. All right. So this is pharmacovigilance, safety, safety, safety. All right. So evolution, evolution of the profession of um, pharmacovigilance. So pharmacovigilance has been around for more than, a, let's say, a century, right? Since Hannah's um, um, chloroform exposure and toxicity. So what about the profession in pharmacovigilance? Can you tell us about its, pro its progression? So first, uh, the pharmacovigilance, sometimes uh, we, uh, we think that pharmacovigilance and drug safety is just the industry, pharma industry business. Yeah. But no, the pharmacovigilance the, is uh, for the, all the healthcare professionals in pharma, as I had the chance to work on drug safety and pharmacovigilance in hospital environment, in regulatory affairs and health authority, and also in uh, pharma industry. Good. This uh, pharmacovigilance is a business of, of you, you are pharmacist and also it concerns also the patient. Yeah. The patient, when he uh, the, the patient um, look at the leaflet, sometimes we we look for the adverse events. Okay, and the adverse events in a leaflet, it's for pharmacovigilance. A pharmacovigilance specialist or pharmacovigilance professional, he will revise and redact the adverse events, the frequency of adverse events in a leaflet. Okay. For example, yeah. All right, sounds very good. Okay, so pharmacovigilance and the best practices. So can you tell us more about the, the, the knowledge of pharmacological best practices and about the sa safety data administration? What, what is all of that? So the pharmacovigilance, you know, and don't be surprised yeah. that we, we are doing and we are performing pharmacovigilance, all people, patients, doctors, pharmacists, nurses, pharmacovigilance is a day-to-day -day activity of all the healthcare professionals. We avoid to use aspirin or some drugs. We avoid to, uh, to, to, to use some practices. Mm -hmm. We avoid to have risks. But we, the, the, the pharmacovigilance is to document all those, those activities. We have to document all the activities, what we are doing to avoid risks, to prescribe, for example, uh, aspirin uh, for, uh, uh, or penicillin for someone who has an allergy of penicillin. Okay, so to, to avoid the allergy, allergy occurrence, for example. Okay. But just all those practices, we have to de 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 document it, them, to document them, and we have best practices. We have uh, to report those, those adverse events, which is serious, which is not serious, and in final, to uh, to ident identify the balance of risk and benefits. Be risk benef benefits. Yeah. All right. So that sounds very good. We have a lot of questions in here, but we're gonna proceed, and then we're gonna keep the questions at the end. Okay. So what about the career path? So let let's say like me as um, a pharmacist and, and a lot of my colleagues who are listening to, to, to this live, okay? Pharmacists, doctors, other healthcare professionals, nurses, for example, and with medical background. What would I seek the career path of pharmacovigilance? 
So would you please let us know more about the career path options and why do you recommend it? So uh, as I said before, you we can work in pharmacovigilance departments as a pharmacist, as a medical doctor, as medical background, land life, life science background, PhD and master science, and also uh, as a nurse in North Africa, in North America, sorry, uh, in regulatory authority or yeah. agencies, like in the FDA, like in uh, European Medi Medicine Agency, Health Canada, and as we say, the national competent authority. Oh. Okay? okay. So to assess the drug safety and to assess all the adverse, serious adverse events reported from healthcare professionals and from the industry. We can also work as pharmacovigilance specialist in the hospital environments, like I did in, at, in Paris, for yeah. example. And we can also work as pharmacovigilance specialist or manager or in the pharma industry as we have requirements as in, industri uh, in the industri pharma industry, we have requirement to report uh, adverse events to the national competent authority. All right. So this is um, this is like um, a continuation of our previous slide. That was one of the doctors. Is that just to, to let the people, especially the pharmacists and even the doctors, is that our practice is not always clinical. There is always options out there. So as a pharmacist, you don't need to stay for the rest of your life in a community pharmacy. And as a doctor, you don't need to stay for the rest of your life. As a family doctor, for example, there are options. And those options actually are very interesting, especially if you're a person who is looking for action and adventure. And <laughs> for Michael could be the best um, option for that. So. Doctor, regardless of the um, career options, can you tell us about the regulations, the guidances, um, the GDP in Canada? So uh, let me say also that the pharmacovigilance is, yeah. invo is involved in all the life cycle of a drug. Mm -hmm. Since, since the screening, pharmaceutical, yes. or pharmacological screening, and uh, until the marketing or the withdrawal of the med of the drug from the market. So we are using drug safety, uh, or we are involved in drug safety yes. in clinical trials, phase one, phase two, phase three, and mm -hmm. phase four, and pharmacovigilance in post-marketing. You know that there's many, many of um, opportunities and job openings in all the clinical phases and the post-marketing. Also, we have also, uh, since we are in the this pan pandemic, yes. and I hope that all is well for our atten uh, attendees, Hope so. uh, and their friends. <laughs> as we uh, there, there is a huge development, as you as you know, for the vaccines and treatment against COVID nineteen. Yeah. We have a huge opportunities, and we have more opportunities for openings in pharmacovigilance and drug safety. Wow. And if we, uh, I, I'm sorry, so I return to your. First question yes. about the requirements and the good pharmacovigilance practices in Canada. As example, we have to report or we have to report serious adverse events. Yes. As I say, we as pharmacovigilance specialists in industry, for example, we have to. Uh, to there's a requirement, and a pharmacovigilance specialist or manager or director. Uh, we, we we should know those requirements to be compliant with the regulation okay, okay. so 
the reporting of serious adverse events, we have examples as seven days for uh, in clinical trials for death or life threatening for the other serious hospitalization or medically significant adverse events, 15 days, the serious and unexpected or the serious expected, okay? For all those ICSRs, the ICSRs are the uh, individual case safety reports, individual. cases of adverse events. Okay. We gather all the these icsrs all these individual cases in periodic reports we can we can uh, the, the this period this periodic report uh have another name it's aggregate reports we aggregate all those uh individual case reports in one report to uh, to assess the risk benefit balance okay. periodically. Okay. In, yeah. Wow. So, um, as as a clinical research certified person, we always have this big question: is what's the difference between adverse reaction, okay, and um, serious adverse um, reaction? and drug-related um, adverse drug reaction or uh, adverse drug reaction. So what, what's the difference when we say it generally, okay, and when we say it linked with a drug? And when we say serious, when, when it is considered as serious? So uh, uh, pharmacovigilance is also about, is uh, always, sorry, about the interaction and the exposure of the drug. With the person. With, with the patient mm -hmm. or the consumer. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we have a global term, adverse event. And in pharmacovigilance, we, are, um, we uh, make surveillance about medication error. You know, adverse event can be just a medication error as we have uh, um, a... Um, a uh, and a, mis a misuse okay. or uh, a misuse of the, the, the drug or uh, an error in prescribing the dose. Okay, so adverse event is different than adverse, uh, ad the adverse drug reaction. The adverse drug reaction, it's when we have exposure on the patient, okay. but an error of ex for pre prescribing we have to identify this error and to make corrective actions and preventive actions to avoid this risk. Okay. All right. So now I think it sounds clear. Okay. So let's talk more um, about the main duties. So for a person, we have already mentioned that but we can go um, thoroughly over it again. For a person who's working in pharmacovigilance and drug safety, what are the main duties that he or she um, has to do on the daily basis? So uh, the person working in pharmacovigilance should be trained about all of these definitions, should have a strong knowledge to be compliant, a strong knowledge of the regulation and to identify all PV or pharmacovigilance related adverse events. For example, if a patient call to have called the company or the medical uh, information call center and ask about uh, in, in, uh, an information of uh, a drug, if the um, the the, uh, the the patient or the caller if uh, talk about an adverse event if he ask uh, sorry but uh, can we have or i had diarrhea when i used uh, a drug your drug or your 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 product okay. this is a pv related event 
and we have to keep it to and uh, identify it and and to document us we, um, my my husband is in the hospital since he used your product mm -hmm. this is an adverse event but we have to ask and follow up to follow up and ask about more information to assess the um the causality between our drug and the adverse event this is the causality assessment because sometimes the causality the drug the adverse event are related or not related and this is our job we can be also involved in clinical trials activities because we have to identify all those risks in clinical trials. We contribute to the compliance of pharmacovigilance activities because we have requirements to report to the, regu uh, to the uh, reg regulatory authority, to Health Canada. We have to report adverse drug reactions, the serious, non-serious, expected with different timelines. Timelines, and we have to avoid also to be late on the, those reportings. All right. At, at the end, we have in as as pharmacovigilance, a person working in pharmacovigilance, we have an external interactions with the regulatory affairs, with QA, quality assurance, with also uh, regulatory affairs and marketing. Okay. And also sometimes. This is what it's different in in we we uh, in in pharma industry, for example, uh -huh. we can interact with other companies. Sometimes, in in, in different companies, as the they are comp the competition, they are competitive. But we use the courtesy case when we have a knowledge or uh, the awareness about a drug reaction but it's not our, it's generic, yeah. as it's not our product for the company A, this is the product of company B. Yeah. The company A send this adverse event to the company B to raise the, the, their awareness. Okay, wow. You know, for market vigilance, oh my, man, it's so, so huge and so important, especially um, especially when when they withdraw medications out of the shelves, definitely for mock vigilance behind that. <laughs> All right. So, um, what about the, the the skill set and the qualifications for you to be a for mock vigilance specialist? So uh, yes. Uh, we, uh, as a pharmacovigilance specialist, you should be a specialist or uh, our assistant or uh, also coordinator. Uh, you must have a university degree in health sciences. Okay. As, as BC, bachelor, uh, DSS is in Quebec, uh, master science and the doctorate or PhD in pharmacy, nursing, medical doctors, or other uh, related discipline. For pharmacovigilance spe specialist, it, uh, it, it's uh, an asset to have two to five years of experience. But oh. I know that we can replace this with oh. trainings and with the knowledge. Why we ask the experience for the experience two to five years, but I know that job seekers sometimes yes. we don't have this experience and we must yeah. enter the and to have must have a first job to get the experience experience. So we can replace this with learnings, with trainings, with a knowledge of regulation, because the purpose is in an interview when you will be face to a hiring manager, manager, you have to show him and to sell yourself and to show him that you have a knowledge of the regulation about, uh, you, you know, in job description, description of pharmacovigilance, 
yes. the first requirement is the knowledge of the regulation mm. to be compliant and pharmacovigilance activities. Wow. So also you have you 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 have to. to uh, we th this is uh, some assets to have the ana analytical thinking, because also we have to uh, uh, identify the cas the causality and the, to assess and uh, to, to identify the causality between. Yes. the drug and the adverse event, if it's related, not related, uh, and unaccessible or, or, or so. The ability to work on multiple projects. <laughs> Sometimes we have portfolios and we are in rare disease. We jump to the diabetics, to oh. oncology. So uh, yes, we have to be uh, multitask. Most okay. Yeah. yeah. The wow. ability to work uh, as part of a team, mm -hmm. because um, we uh, we are in the pharmacovigilance team, pharmacists, MDs, nurse nurses, and uh, with the managers, we yeah. we work as a team. We have um, a flow of activity, and we the teamwork is very important. Mm. Of course. The fluency in English or in French, this is for uh, Quebec or Canada, as French and English are both uh, official languages. But as you know, it's, also, it's always an asset also to be bilingual, trilingual, because for global companies, as it's, uh, it's a global, the international, the English is the international language. Of course. Yeah. And if a patient or uh, an HCP reports in, uh, in, in other language, we have to translate. Uh -huh. We need to translate all this adverse. And we, we, we avoid to translate the adverse event reports in Google Translate or others, uh, or others uh, websites because we need the assessment, the translation of yes. a medical doctor or pharmacist mm -hmm. to keep the information and uh, correct. Oh, wow. That's a lot of work just because the, the people out there are not speaking English. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so two to five years of relevant experience, but Dr. Amar, has a shortcut for that, right? So we have, we have a shortcut to get into the pharmacovigilance um, sector. So Dr. Amar, I know that you have a success story. One of your students, she's right now working in McKesson, Canada, right? So if you, if you don't mind, tell us about your student, at like how, how, did you, how did you get to know her and Tell us about this inspiring story. How did she landed in Canada? She she took a workshop with you, and then eventually she landed a job in McKesson, which is um, for for the people who are living in Canada. No, they we all know how huge McKesson is um, in Canada, uh, especially for the drug um, distribution. So if you don't mind, tell us about the story. Yes. So. Um you know the the we said that necessity is the mother of the invasion the the invention and uh, when i landed before i landed here in canada even if i had an experience of pharmacovigilance in europe and the knowledge of the european uh, the european regulation the, here in canada they required or other countries yes. the local the local re regulation, and I, uh, I, I looked for trainings about pharmacovigilance requirements here in Canada, okay. and I didn't find. Oh, so I did it myself as I was graduated in pharmacovigilance and drug safety before. But someone who has any knowledge or mm -hmm. no knowledge of pharmacovigilance and drug safety. Yeah. I think that is difficult to find 
trainings and education in pharmacovigilance. That's why I started by uh, organizing workshops. Mm -hmm. And one of my students, yes, I trained her on uh, on pharmacovigilance requirements or pharmacovigilance uh, uh, regulation, pharmacovigilance day-to-day -day activities. And as she was uh, a very smart woman, girl, for a med medical doctor, uh, I helped her to know all of this. And I gave her the reference and I, uh, I, I helped her to build uh, uh, her resume, mm -hmm. the cover letter, and the reference. And this, this is my part, but the, the, her part is yes. huge because right. she was very motivated to get the job. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you can't you can't do it like always depending on the other person. Always we have to depend on ourselves at the beginning. But you you are the spark. This is the thing. <laughs> you are the spark. So we would like to um, announce for the attendees, for our students, students of RX course and um, students of Dr. Omar that we are launching a drug safety and pharmacovigilance certificate. So um, if you like to browse the, the page that I am browsing right now, um, um, let me type it for you, it's very easy. So here it is. Okay, so it is dspvc.rxcourse.com. So DSPVC is Drug Safety and Pharmacovigilance Certificate. So, um, Dr. Omar, let's go through, let's go through the um, certificate. So for the certificate, as you have mentioned, it is a job ready. So you are going to prepare the person at the moment he finishes the certificate, he should be or he will be prepared to get into the job sector, into the um, industry right away. So this is exactly the, the, the first thing that we have um, to mention. So what, what do we expect from um, this uh, certificate, Dr. Um, Omar? And, if you could tell us like how many lectures, how many hours, what are the resources, kind of overview uh, on, on it. So uh, yes, the pharmacovigilance training is right now an issue our, uh, in, in the whole world. As I'm involved in, in the International Society of Pharmacovigilance, all persons in working in pharmacovigilance, they know that there are very little trainings of pharmacovigilance in Europe, in North America, in Middle East, in North Africa, mm -hmm. in in the whole world. In the whole world. The, so uh, this is to uh, help students to find or to get the chance to be trained in pharmacovigilance and to open the door to the pharmacovigilance openings and roles. Perfect, that just sounds perfect. So this is you, so let me share. So this is you in um, a conference about the world drug safety. So um, we hope that after such a certificate and when we go through deeper into the industry of pharmacovigilance and drug safety, you are going to be in the place of Dr. Omar. This is what we hope, right? Dr. Like yep. this is what we yep. are planning. <laughs> All right, so um, uh, a lot of our, our attendees right now, I'm looking at the names, um, the people who are commenting. It's, it seems like very international. Uh, it seems like all of our attendees from all over the world. So we would like to assure them is that 
it is going to be international, right, doctor? So it doesn't matter if you are in the Middle East or if you are in America or if you are in France or if you are in um, Britain or any place, any other place, um, Germany, Spain. So it is international. So um, if it's international, what are the... Um, the guidelines that we are going to use, are we covering the European guidelines and the United States or the North American guidelines? How is it going to be? It's very important that I know that, and as I was a student, a job seeker, yes. that we always look for the positions and openings in global companies. And the global companies, as they are global, Mm -hmm. They are in, in in different countries. Yeah. Let me give you an example. A European, a European company. Right. A global but European company in Germany or in UK. They are located in Europe. Okay. And they are required to follow the European regulation. Uh huh. But their affiliate in Canada, okay. the affiliate in Canada is required to follow two regulations. Okay. The regulation of Canada, Canadian regulation, uh -huh. and to report to the headquarters, to the global pharmacovigilance department, in, for example, in Europe. And as a pharmacovigilance person working in a team of pharmacovigilance in affiliate in Canada, I must have get the knowledge of the European active, uh, regulation and of the Canadian regulation. Let's take an, another example. Yeah. If a, a US company, a global company, located in New York or in Boston, yes. they are requ required to be compliant with the pharma COVID, with the, the uh, American or FDA Food and Drug Administration regulation, and they are requ they required for the affiliate in France or Germany to be compliant compliant with the European pharma uh, regulation or pharma vigilance guidance and the US guidance. The US, yeah. So and finally, the knowledge of the the global of the world regulations and the main world regulations are the european one and the north american health canada um health canada us fda yeah. and eema uh, european medical Ag agency and for the few uh, next years as uk we have an impact of the brexit oh. on the regulation in UK, as we know that there's some global companies located in UK. All right, that's amazing. So um, for our for our attendees, since I have some few comments, number one, just to let you know that the questions we are going to address all the questions, but just we finish um, with our um, session. So we are going to answer all your questions. Don't worry about that. Number two, people are asking about the prices. Since this is a live video and is going to be recorded, the prices will be released once the live uh, finished. Okay, so just wait for the prices. Once the live is finished, the prices will be live. So, doctor, we see we have three packages in here. So we have silver, we have gold, we have platinum. So what is the difference? Why? why there is different three packages and what's, what is the benefit of getting each one of those? So uh, different steps. If we are, because we have job seekers yeah. that, that they already involved in pharma industry, in marketing departments or regulatory affairs, or, and there's the beginners mm -hmm. or a freshly um, graduated students the, the freshly uh, and uh, regular, um, graduated students, they have to uh, uh, 
uh, get the knowledge of the regulation, this is the module one. Oh. And I organized all the certification in oh. three models, the three key models. The model one is about all the global regulation and oh. quality assurance in pharmacovigilance. The second one is the day-to-day -day activities in pharmacovigilance in department, the flow of pharmacovigilance. The third module is about the projects in pharmacovigilance, aggregate reports, medical writing, causality assessment, and so on. So for the first, the first, the, the silver can be for the beginners. Oh. And the, 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 the gold one can be for the beginners, uh, they can, uh, had the step to to the gold one with the other model active the regulation and day-to-day -day activities or pv operations okay. okay with some features as a p uh, resume uh, i can help we we will help to build a resume for pharmacovigilance roles and cover letters and for the platinum is the full uh full service as the all the trainings the courses in pv uh pv introductory trainings the module one regulation the pv operations and the projects model three aggregate medical writing in aggregate reports plus pv readiness pv uh, pharmacovigilance interview readiness coaching for the interview and videos and uh, to help building a pharmacovigilance uh, for a resume for pharmacovigilance uh, uh, applications and cover letters. Okay, that so that, that's that's uh, the platinum. The platinum, yeah. The last one. So just we have a little surprise for our attendees. We have early bird offer, 20% early bird offer. Um, it's going to be, to last only for five days till the 1st of October. So if you'd like to take that um, offer, you can just um, follow the uh, links and um, fill the form. Okay, so it's almost an hour and a half. Uh, we are reaching the finish line of this live. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, our attendees, our viewers. Thank you for each one of you who stayed till this uh, minute. Uh, Thank we you. Hope, we hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Dr. Omar, for the incredible amount of information and for the initiative in uh, creating a course and a certificate in drug safety and pharmacovigilance. We hope to see you all in the upcoming course, which is starting on the 1st of November on rxcourse.com. Uh, the landing page of the course, it's in the comment. I'm gonna paste it all over again so you can um, have a look. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shams, for your efforts to preparing this live. Thank you, Dr. Omar. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye.